Hello YouTube viewers, hope you're all doing good. I did a video about ELK stack uh, back in 2015 and um, even now in 2018, since um, three years um, since I made that video, people are still following that video. So um, I thought, why shouldn't I do a video on the latest version instead? And um, um, here it is. So this is basically installing the ELK stack on CentOS 7 virtual machine. Um, let's go through a few slides first and understand what, what the different components are and then um, we'll get our hands dirty uh, by doing some hands-on. Okay, so the architecture, the pieces. You've got the ELK stack here. We're going to install that on a server, a CentOS 7 virtual machine. Um, the, the main components are the, the log stash, Elasticsearch and Kibana. Logstash is the uh, is the component that um, receives the receives the logs, processes them, and then stores the log in the Elasticsearch. The Elasticsearch is just a a storage engine, and Kibana is uh, is a kind of is a is a place where you visualize the uh, the logs, create dashboards, reports, and so on. Um, Elasticsearch and Kibana. We're going to uh, make it listen only on the local host. The only ports exposed are for the Logstash service and the Nginx. Um, we're going to use FileBeat to collect the logs from the client machine and send the logs to the Logstash um, service. And the Nginx will act as the reverse proxy. So when user connects to uh, the Nginx, it proxies the request to Kibana. Kibana pulls the data from the Elasticsearch and um, you get the dashboard. Right, that's the architecture. It's quite simple. And let's go and look at the component individually. So the Elasticsearch used for storing the logs. Um, to install Elasticsearch um, and also to install um, the log stash and the other components, we need Java 8 or later. So we, we're going to be installing that one. Um, installation method, you can either use the tarball, um, if you had a chance to look at my previous video about ELK stack uh, in 2015, I've used uh, the, the tarball method. And you can also download the RPM um, and install it, or you could um, create an M repository. And in this video, I'm going to be using this one because um, using M, M repository gives you um, added benefit like it's easy to install and whenever a new version comes in you can upgrade uh, the package so it's basically easy to manage. Um, the Elasticsearch is um, when you start the service it's going to listen on these two ports 9200 and 9300. Um, the config file is in the um, EDC Elasticsearch directory it's a YAML file if you don't know what YAML is it's a markup language which is yet another markup language Log file, var log Elasticsearch, that's where you'll find uh, the logs. It will also log to the uh, the journal, so you can use the journal CTL command to look at the logs. Kibana, that's the visualization tool where you can see the logs. Installation method, it's same as uh, the Elasticsearch. And again, we're going to use the YAM repository. It will be listening on port 5601 we're going to use nginx as the reverse proxy and here's the config file um, kibana doesn't have a logs directory like var log something so you could use the journal um, to look at the uh, kibana logs nginx um, we'll come to know when when, when we set when, when we set it up it's just a reverse proxy nothing nothing serious. Logstash, that's the component that receives, processes, indexes logs and stores them in the Elasticsearch. Again we will be using the M repository to install. Um, I think I've made a mistake, this is not 5601, this is 5044 I guess, it's. I just copy pasted the previous slide. So it will listen on um, Oh my god, that's 
uh, the slide from the previous uh, previous slide just duplicated the slide and forgot to edit that that's okay okay when you start logstash it will listen on port 5044 not on local host but on all the interfaces forget about the rest of the things don't worry we will come to know when we set it up file bait that's the component uh, that we're gonna install on all the clients um, basically it collects the logs from the system locally and then sends the log to the logstash service um, that's the config file etc file dot yaml and again the log files are stored in var log file bait and you can look at it using the journal ctl command as well kibana dashboard so when we complete our setup this is what we are expecting to see the dashboard that's it from the slides point of view so um, let's start let's start some hands-on okay so if you have noticed my first slide I've uh, included the uh, the URL for my github account where I've got the installation instruction let's fire up a browser if you go to um, by the way, all my uh, um, instructions are based on uh, the references I took from Elastic.co. If you want to read further, you can go to Elastic.co, go to the download sections, and this is where I um, downloaded uh, the installation instructions from. Quick Start Guide, these are scattered around various places, so I thought it would be easy for the users to follow if, if they've got everything in one place very simple so that's what I've got in my github account so go to github.com slash just me and open source slash ELK if you go here install center 7 so basically this is what we're going to follow before that, um, what I'm going to do is um, let's bring up the terminal first, and uh, I've cd'd into play directory. That's just a temporary directory that I created. Um, I'm going to create two virtual machines using uh, VirtualBox. And uh, if you don't know what Vagrant is, I'm using Vagrant to provision the virtual machines. I'm planning to do a couple of videos on Vagrant. Um, when it comes to provisioning virtual machines and automation, um, Vagrant makes our life a lot easier. So, quickly, I'll show you what my Vagrant file looks like. ALK, Vagrant provisioning. By the way, if you've got two machines or two virtual machines ready, you don't have to go through this Vagrant. But if you are starting from scratch, um, you can use this. Um, Vagrant for provisioning the VMs. Okay, that's my Vagrant file. I've got two machines. One is called server.example.com, the other one is client.example.com. I've hard coded IP here, and the server is going to have a gig of RAM and one CPU. The client is going to have half a gig of RAM and one CPU. And I'm downloading, I'm downloading the base box, which is um, the CentOS 7 base box and I've also got the bootstrap file so it basically um, downloads the base box and then uh, carries out these information these uh, the, these instructions what I'm doing is I'm updating the system installing some required packages updating some environment files enabling password authentication uh, by default, uh, if you provision a machine using Vagrant, um, you won't have the password authentication, at least for the CentOS box. Um, uh, the Vagrant SSH command works with the, uh, the SSH key. So I want to be able to log in as root to these virtual machines, so I'm enabling the password authentication. I am disabling SE Linux and Firewall. Um, you can have AC Linux and you can have firewall. You just need to open up the proper ports and set the uh, the AC Linux booleans. But my focus this video in this video is just to get you 
up and running with um, with the Kibana, the ELK stack completely. So if we have to do the SC Linux and firewall thing, it's going to lengthen the video. So I'm, I've disabled those two. I've set a temporary root password and I've got the host file, etc host, um, with the IP address of uh, the two servers on each machines. Okay, so that's my Vagrant file. We'll go back and bring up the installation document. Okay, so that's my terminal. It's here, and if I launch VirtualBox, you can see I haven't got any virtual machines now. I'm going to clone my repository, git clone https just me and open source slash elk and go into elk and cd into vagrant provisioning so in order to use vagrant you gotta install vagrant of course and then virtualbox and that's it you're in this directory you've got the vagrant file Excuse me. You've got the uh, the bootstrap script. All you have to do is vagrant up and then wait. It's going to take a few minutes. I'm going to pause the video here. Okay, it's all done. Um, you can see the result of the vagrant up command. That's there. Vagrant up and it has provisioned. Uh, the first machine server it did this is the the bootstrapping bit and um, it has created the second machine as well okay right we've got the two machines ready let's get started so I'm gonna fire up a, a tmux session so we can play with uh, both the machines at the same time Okay, so before I do that, I'm going to edit the etc host file on my local machine and add the entry 172.42.42.10 server.example.com server 172.42.42.20 client.example.com client. Okay, now I can I'm going to log into the server machine. SSH root at server. And um, because I've done that previously, it's uh, the IP address, the year uh, that the fingerprint has changed. So let's delete the previous entry. Okay. Um, Right, I'm in, and if you look at the version, it's CentOS 7.5, firewall disabled, SE status, SE Linux is in permissive mode, get enforce is in permissive mode, system CDL status firewall D, if I type it correctly, it's disabled. Okay, we are good to go. Uh, this is, by the way, the same as uh, uh, the client machine. And if you see ADC host, uh, that's the part of bootstrapping process. We added these two entries. So I can ping client. Right, let's go back to the installation instructions and follow them. The first requirement is to install Java 8. Okay, while well, it's downloading Java, let's look at what we're going to do next. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is install Elasticsearch. First, we're going to import the key because we're going to create an M repository uh, under the etcm.repos.d directory, Elasticsearch.repo, uh, and uh, create this file, install Elasticsearch, and start the Elasticsearch. That's going to be the same for Kibana as well. Create a repository, install, start, 
Okay, let's take one step at a time. Java is installed. Java version 180. Cool. Okay, let's import the key. That's imported. Create the configuration file. Okay, and m install Elasticsearch. m install minus y elastic search. Right, Elasticsearch is installed. What are we going to do next? Enable and start the Elasticsearch. System CTL daemon reload. System CTL enable elastic search system CTL start elastic search so the configuration file if you want to change anything we're not going to change any configuration the default configuration is well and good but if you want to change it it's rpm minus QC elastic search the configuration file is here ADC Elasticsearch, Elasticsearch.yaml. Let's see if the um, service is up and the log files are in var log Elasticsearch. So I've got all these logs. We can also look the logs from the journal CTL unit Elasticsearch. There you go, it's bringing up the service. If I do net start minus NLCP, it's already started the service uh, 9200, 9300. So we are good to go. The Elasticsearch service is running. Now let's do the Kibana. We're going to create an M repository file and install Kibana yum install kibana all right kibana is installed let's enable and start the service system ctl daemon reload system ctl enable kibana System CTL start Kibana. Um, we are not going to edit any configurations, but if you want RPM minus QC Kibana, it's here. ETC Kibana Kibana dot YAML. Let's look at the logs. Journal CTL minus minus unit. Kibana. Okay, so it has already started the service. Let's see if it's listening on any port. Uh, not yet. You would be seeing very shortly it will be listening on port 5601. Not yet. Not yet. There you go. 5601. So that's the. Uh, and if you look, it's. Uh, listening on localhost so you won't be able to access Kibana dashboard from uh, directly from from a different machine so you have to go through nginx so let's get that done now nginx is not available on the default repository so you gotta enable the epl repository and then install um, nginx let's install the uh, the epl repository and now you can install nginx Right, create the proxy configuration. Remove server block from the default config file and create a new configuration, etc nginx conf.dkibano.conf. Create a file with this content. Okay, let's do that. The default nginx configuration is etc nginx nginx.conf. Go to the server block right here delete 
the lines starting from this line until the end of the block which is this line okay I've deleted the entire server block save and quit the file now let's create the configuration that's down enable and start nginx system ctl enable nginx system ctl start nginx we should be good to go now let's start minus nltp and uh, port 80 yeah that's listening on all the interface okay let's see if we can see the dashboard the dashboard is running on the server.example.com and I've got my ATC hosts set up correctly so I'm using the name instead of IP address cool looks like it's working right and this is the default uh, view when you install the dashboard but I don't think it's usable yet you need to um, have some logs it will say no default index pattern you must select or create one to continue okay let's come back to this later but we shall proceed with the, the log stash installation so now we have done the elastic search for storage kibana for visualization and now comes the important bit log stash again we're going to create a repository file repository configuration and install logstash m install logstash right logstash is installed what we're going to do next is um, generate the uh, the certificates let's copy the command line Okay, we are using the OpenSSL command um, with a subject. Um, we don't have to, if you don't give this one, uh, it will ask you for uh, various uh, information. But um, all we need is the, the CN, the canonical name. Um, X509, and we require, we uh, create a certificate which should be, which should expire in like 10 years, 3650 days. Um, batch generating the new key what's the algorithm and key out that's my private key etc pki tls private logstash.key and minus out that's my certificate okay that's created now we need to create a configuration file for logstash we need to tell logstash what to listen how to process where to store the logs that's exactly what we are going to do now so create this file I'm going to copy paste this content here and save it okay let me explain what it does so it has got three sections uh, the input section uh, the filter and the output section input what to listen on which port to listen and what's the uh, enable SSL virus the SSL certificate virus the SSL key file um, which protocol you're going to use and so on um, the filter section tells you how to filter the logs so all the logs coming into log stash it checks and if the type of the log that's coming in is syslog it does this match and then uh, indexes it so the output section it says where you want to store uh, the processed log we're going to store in Elasticsearch and the host is localhost uh, because Logstash and Elasticsearch are running on the same machine so it's localhost and the name of the index that's it and let's enable Logstash by the way um, if you want to um, organize uh, these uh, information you can have these uh, in a three separate files maybe you can call it 01 input.conf 02 filter.conf 03 output.conf uh, just for the sake of this video I've uh, 
combine all these in a single file but either way it should work let's start the lock stash service system ctl enable lock stash system ctl start lock stash okay let's check uh, the uh, the locks journal ctl unit lock stash okay it's um, bringing up the service i think it's going to take a while um, you will soon see uh, the service will start listening on port 5044 okay while we wait for that to come up let's log into the client machine it's time to install the file beat um, package on the client root at client uh, again set where is I what 18 line 18 in the known hosts file I know why okay I'm logged into the client machine let's see if I can ping the server ping server it's working fine the first step is to create the M repository. If you look, it's the same repository that we added on the server. So let's copy this. And install FileBeat. Okay, let's check if it has started the service on the master on the server. Let's start minus LCP. There you go, 5044. That's the uh, the Logstash service. Okay, back in the client, we need to configure FileBeat. The FileBeat is installed. Um, one thing we need to do is to copy the certificate that we created on the master because um, using that certificate, this client is going to identify itself when it submits the log uh, to the Logstash server. So we're going to copy the certificate sap server.example.com and the certificate is under etc pki tls certs logstash.crt copy that to etc pki tls search directory locally on this machine okay that's copied if i do ls there you go that's the certificate okay so where is the configuration file for filebeat rpm minus qc filebeat it's here etc filebeat filebeat.yaml let's edit that file the first thing you got to do is you have to enable this enabled true I'm not gonna um, set all the logs I'm just I'm just interested in messages and var log secure the log file that stores uh, that logs the uh, the SSH authentication okay once that's done go all the way down to the output section output output there it is output we don't want to send to Elasticsearch, so let's comment that out and enable the logstash output. It's definitely not localhost. We are sending the logs to server.example.com on port 5044. One other thing you got to do, otherwise it won't work, is to uncomment this line and uh, enter the location of the certificate make sure you edit uh, you uncomment this line and not the SSL certificate line although the names are misleading okay our location of the certificate is etc pki tls search logstash dot crt that's all we need save and quit the file what else we need to enable and start the file beat system ctl enable file beat 
systemctl start file beat okay let's look at the logs journal ctl minus minus unit okay it has started the service now it's time to go back to the kibana dashboard and have some fun kibana dashboard and now if you click check for new data there you go you won't be able to select this but in the text field start typing file and you'll get that one here click next and uh, if you bring this drop down you got to select the uh, the timestamp field and then create index pattern it's going to create an index we're all set go to the discover link and magically you're going to see that right here's our logs the logs are from client.example.com you can see the beat.name beat host name beat version and so on on the left as you have got just one client the beat.host name will contain uh, client.example.com and 100% of the logs we have collected so far is from client.example.com because we've only set up one client if you've got multiple clients based on the number of logs from each client you will see a different picture here okay how about um, and where these logs are coming from for example this one is from the source var log messages we have uh, enabled uh, log forwarding for messages as well as the secure log file var log secure if you want to see var log secure we can type in the search query if you want auto completion or any feature click options and turn on the query feature it's it's already turned on but if if it's not turned on just feel free to turn that on it will be really helpful so I want to limit the search to the source type var log secure start by typing source colon var log secure I'm gonna show you that this is not going to work okay still you're seeing var log messages that's because you need to enclose this within double quotes okay so now source var log secure var log secure and you're seeing the logs for the var log secure and if you want um, search for sudo warlock secure sudo all these okay so now it's quite similar to Splunk if you have used or uh, played with Splunk before it's quite similar to Splunk but uh, uh, there are lots of uh, features in ELK which I haven't explored yet I've been told that uh, um, for the features um, that are here in Elasticsearch ELK stack uh, that are in Splunk as well the, the, the pricing is quite high in Splunk so for the same set of features uh, in ELK you could get it because it's open source okay but um, I think that's um, that is it I don't think I've missed anything uh, but going forward I'm planning to dive deep in the ELK stuff and possibly I could do a couple more videos um, this installation is basically on uh, the CentOS 7 um, there'll be a slight change if you want to install that um, install this or follow this process on a Ubuntu machine uh, basically uh, if you want to add a repository it's a different set of commands otherwise the configurations are all going to be the same uh, maybe I should do uh, a video on Ubuntu as well how to install ELK stack uh, on Ubuntu um, I'll see I'll see if I've got time to do that but if I got time um, I'll do that video as well uh, that is it 
Um, where is my virtual box? Okay, there you go. That's the uh, the virtual machines that we created using Vagrant. And if I go back to the uh, uh, terminal, I'm going to exit out of the virtual machines. And uh, the final step I'm going to do is start the uh, uh, virtual machines. Vagrant halt. It's going to stop the uh, virtual machine just to clean up the environment. That's done, and if you want to delete the VMs, Vagrant destroy minus F. Right, all done. Thanks for watching. See you in my next video. Bye bye.